We have the pleasure to receive today Catherine Sianflon from Laval University and also a researcher at the Research Center of Hôpital Laval in Quebec City. And she's also the Canada Chair of the Adipose Tissue. So in, in the respect to this chair, she's going to talk to us about uh, the secretion of all different kind of hormones from the adipose tissue that has some influence into uh, eating behavior. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the things that has really changed in terms of our view of adipose tissue is that it's not just a reservoir for storage of fat, but in fact it's been shown now, uh, and most recently within the last 15 years, to produce a lot of different hormones. So to really be an endocrine tissue producing hormones that have wide-ranging effects. And I'm going to mention just some of those today. So two of the major hormones that have been identified are leptin and adiponectin, and leptin is now known to be a quite potent satiety factor that actually influences not only how much we eat but also has very strong influences on energy expenditure as well as having effects on body tissues throughout. And one of the interesting concepts with leptin is that it's produced by fat tissue but it acts directly on the brain to influence uh, feeding behavior and energy expenditure. A second hormone that has been identified is adiponectin. And adiponectin is interesting from a number of points of view because it's produced at very high levels. It's one of the few hormones that actually decreases in obesity rather than increasing. And it has quite strong effects not only at the level of fatty acid utilization and oxidation, but also increases insulin sensitivity in a number of different tissues. And, and has been shown to have wide ranging effects or changes in effects in obesity type 2 diabetes and other diseases. Now, of the many other hormones that have been identified in adipose tissue, I'm just going to mention one other, and that is acylation stimulating protein, uh, the hormone on which I do a large amount of research. And acylation stimulating protein is a hormone that is produced by adipose tissue that actually has effects directly back on adipose tissue and that influences the adipose tissue storage or stimulates the efficiency at which we store triglycerides within adipose tissue. One of the other interesting factors in relationship to ASP is that ASP is also produced by the immune system and highlights one of the recent directions of research that has been looked at recently in adipose tissue and that is the overlap between the immune system and between adipose tissue where there is a lot of crosstalk between these two systems. There are many proteins that are produced by adipose tissue that have effects in the immune system and vice versa. So I think this really highlights some of the changes that we have seen in terms of our concept of what adipose tissue does that is not just there for fat storage but is really a very active endocrine tissue producing hormones that have effects at the brain and at other levels and producing hormones that have this crosstalk between the immune and the adipose system influencing what actually goes on in the fat tissue directly. Paul Bovert with uh, Catherine Sianflon at Duchesne, Quebec for the Obesity Bootcamp 2011.